Good morning. Uh, I was having some alone time today with God, and I was really um, needing Him to speak to me about some things. And I'm going to be very open, yet candid, about some issues. You know, we are raised as children to think that in a marriage, you know, there's a happily ever after. And that when you're with the one that God has picked for you, ordained for you to be with, that everything's going to be perfect. And everything's going to be beautiful and that there's not going to be any struggles anymore. That's what the world tells us. And that's what our hearts tell us. However, the Word of God says that we are not of this world. We are of the kingdom of God. His ways are higher than our ways. And the Word of God also tells us, I believe in Jeremiah, that our hearts are deceitful and highly wicked and who can know it? So right there that tells me that, that um, the happily ever after can only be found in Jesus Christ. It cannot be found in another person all the time unless you are, you are a Holy Spirit filled couple who puts God in the center of things. In the, that put yourselves in the center of God okay just like if it's more than putting God in the center of things because when you put God in the center of things there's still still that outside flesh that can that can be active in, in situations like an egg if God is the yolk of an egg and we put him in the center as the yolk is in the center there's still that outside that white that shell that shell is the flesh. It's like our flesh. But we, we should want more of God in our lives than that. We should desire our lives to be more like if our lives are a pebble and that pebble is cast into the middle of the sea. Not even a pebble, but let's do something more pliable. If it's a piece of bread, okay? If our life is a piece of bread and it's cast into a sea, then that water from that sea surrounds it and it envelops it and it, it, it saturates it and that bread becomes soft and pliable and pretty soon the bread isn't visible anymore. Only the water, only the sea is visible and, and there and that's how we should de desire our lives to be. We should desire so much of Christ that we want to throw our lives into Christ and let Him submerse us and let Him fill us to such a great capacity that pretty soon there's nothing of us, our flesh left. There's only Christ shining through us, showing through us. And that's what, what we should desire to be as lovers of Him and as followers of Him. And in that same token, that's what we should desire our marriages to be. Our marriage, we come together with our husband and our wife. And we should desire to throw our marriage, throw ourselves into Christ so deeply that, that He is the only one that's evident in it, that all flesh melts away. Just like the water would melt away, you know, that bread. We're the bread. We need to allow Christ and His holy water, His Holy Spirit, to melt us away. So in that token, we have a daily choice. We have a daily choice to make whether we are going to let God, the Holy Spirit, saturate our lives or whether we're going to hold on to the flesh. And when you, when you have struggles in your marriage, and you will, no matter how much you love each other, no matter how much you love God, the fact is you have two very imperfect people who have come together, and they're, they're becoming one. All right? As Scripture tells us, God will see us as one. No longer two will become one flesh. And it's that becoming one part of the emotions and the spirits. Um, as well as the bodies that can be a very painful painful process and it is a process and I read once that not only is marriage meant to be a gift from God that most closely depicts the passionate love that he has for us and that he wants us to have for him but it, 
it's also a place where two very imperfect people come together and can allow God to work on their issues and mold them and shape them into the man and woman that God has intended for them to be under the safety of um, a marriage that's designed to be filled with unconditional love and designed to last for a lifetime. And that's work, you know, and sometimes that's a, a, a moment by moment refocusing on the Lord and checking, you know, your pride at the door to let Christ come in that door and fill your life, fill your home with more of Him and more of the Holy Spirit. And um, as I was, as I was having time with the Lord and seeking His Word, He let me open to a book, and He brought, He brought in mind um, John thirteen. 34 through 35 where Jesus himself tells us a new command I give you love one another as I have loved you so you must love one another by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another now Corinthians 13 also tells us that love is the greatest gift the greatest gift of all the Word of God also tells us that God himself is love so as a follower of God, the one true God, the creator of the universe, Jesus Christ, uh, we should emanate his love. You know, and sometimes since we're still living in this fleshly body and battling our, our mind that has been the product of a very imperfect fallen world, that love, that true unconditional love in, in many cases is it has to be a choice. You know, that's part of where unconditional love comes in. And, you know, we want people to love us unconditionally. And in that same token, we should be willing and eager in obedience and accordance to the Word of God to have unconditional love for other people. And that unconditional love is a hard thing, especially when, you know, God lets you see the flaws in people just as we have flaws and they see it in us you know we still want them to love us unconditionally so we should love them unconditionally and like I said it's a moment by moment refocusing on the Lord to enable you to do that it's knowing that the battles as Ephesians say in um, chapter 6 I believe it we don't wrestle against flesh and blood we wrestle against principalities uh, in high places okay when someone is acting out or um, causing strife it's not it's not that person especially if it's if they're a follower of Jesus Christ they're being attacked for whatever the reason by the enemy you know and and they're acting out in their moment of weakness and so that's where we as followers of Jesus Christ have to make that choice to love them unconditionally now sometimes when you feel that you've been in a situation where you've been betrayed and the last thing you want to do, um, uh, the last thing you physically and emotionally want to do um, is to, to love that person, what you have to do is, you know, really concentrate on God and because he's, and you have to forgive. Because the Word of God also says that if we want to be forgiven, in Matthew it talks about if we want to be forgiven, and I believe it's the Beatitudes, that, um, not the Beatitudes, I'm sorry, that says part of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew. If we desire to be forgiven by God, we have to forgive. Alright? If we don't forgive, God will not forgive us. It doesn't say that He might forgive us. It says God will not forgive us if we don't forgive. All right, so it's it's a command. So we have two commands here that we are to forgive if we want to be forgiven, and if we want you know salvation. That means salvation. We can't enter heaven if if we're not forgiven of our sins because all of us are sinful. The you know God, Jesus said that if you think a sin, if you think of um, lustfully at a woman, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. You know, so. It, we need to keep our minds pure and submit our thoughts to the Lord. And so all of us are sinners. 
even with when it's a sin of the heart and mind it's still a sin and it can still keep you out of heaven so the point is all of us need forgiven on a daily basis and uh, we need to submit ourselves to the Lord on a daily basis and ask for his forgiveness and in the same way he expects us to forgive if we want him to forgive us we have to forgive you know even if someone doesn't see that they've done anything wrong we have to make the choice to forgive them anyway we don't want anything to separate us from the love of God from God and from eternal salvation and unforgiveness in your heart could do that and nothing is worth spending an eternity in hell without Jesus Christ without the presence of God all right so we need to forgive it's very important um, part of forgiving you, there's a difference between forgiving and healing okay you have to make a conscious choice to forgive in a lot of cases especially if the person doesn't think that they have done anything wrong and they haven't asked for forgiveness you have to choose to forgive them anyway and in a lot of cases you know I have had to ask God to help me in that forgiveness because my flesh didn't want to do it quite honestly and that even includes you know during my relationship my marriage with my husband there have been times that my flesh didn't want to forgive him but out of obedience to the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and God my Father in Heaven creator of the universe and Jesus Christ I have to forgive him you know even if I felt betrayed even if he's felt betrayed by me he has to forgive me and so how do you do that you know like I said I have had to ask God to help me in that um, because true forgiveness can only be found in Jesus Christ and um, and so sometimes it's moment by moment you know resubmitting that to the Lord like let's say you see the person and you feel bitterness in, in your heart you know you say oh, Lord in the name of Jesus I don't want this bitterness in my heart I want to forgive them I choose to forgive them in the name of Jesus help me Lord to forgive them Lord in Jesus name I turn them over to you in the name of Jesus please let there be a healing of both of our hearts and our minds and our spirits in Jesus name and let our relationship glorify you to the fullest in Jesus name I just praise you and thank you Lord amen you know it can be that it's there's been many times you know I've had to pray that you know when I'm when I've been faced with a person that I even thought I had forgiven just to make sure there's no unforgiveness or bitterness in my heart because I don't want, want anything to separate me from God you know um, so and then you know you get to this point where you wonder well how could they do that you know Lord I don't understand they love you and you know they're they're supposed to love me and they said they love me and and I believe they do so how could they they make this choice that has hurt me so deeply you know made that choice how could they make that choice to hurt me and and that's when the Lord spoke to my heart and uh, he he said it's like um, it's like he gave it to me kind of like in a picture form and and then he spoke to my heart he's he's he said it's like sin is like a prison and sin is a prison inside the enemy's camp all right now if your spouse your child were captured by the enemy taken to the enemy's camp and thrown in a jail cell that they could not get out of they wore the enemy's clothes they ate the enemy's food and they were stuck in there living with the enemy that doesn't make them the enemy okay they are still they're still God's child. They still love the Lord. They still love you. You still love them. They are still your blood, your child. They're still your husband and wife. The only thing is they are captive by the enemy in that prison. And in their own strength, they cannot get out of that prison. In the name of Jesus, they can't get out. They need Jesus. They need the name of Jesus. They need the blood of Jesus to get out of that prison. Now, if if this was physically happening, you would do everything in your power, 
to get them out. All right, you wouldn't be bitter at them because they're stuck in a prison in the middle of the enemy's camp. Even if they were forced to let their beards grow, even if they looked dirty and filthy, even if they were dressed in the enemy's clothes, you know, even if it looked like they were having laughter with the enemy because the enemy was surrounding them and laughing, you know, even if it appeared like that, you would know, you know, that's not really what's happening. They're not the enemy. All right, they're not of the enemy, they're of God. And, and you would see past that if it was physically happening, you would know the truth. Well, let's know the truth in the spiritual realm. Let's know the truth that when someone is stuck in a sin and they are trying the hardest they can to get out and they are seeking the Lord and they are praying for deliverance, we need to be alongside of them in the name of Jesus. We need to be praying for them. We need to be fasting for them. And I'm lacking in that. I need to work on that. I need to fast and I need to pray more. Okay, we need to do everything we can spiritually to turn them over to the Lord and help them be set free in the name of Jesus. Okay, there is no time for bitterness. There is no time for anger. There's no time for self-pity. We are talking about souls. We are talking about torment. And that is not of God in the name of Jesus. And we need to get our eyes off of ourselves and put them onto the bigger picture, which is salvation, which is peace that surpasses all understanding, which is, which is unconditional love, which is faith in God. When you don't have necessarily faith in the flesh of another person, have faith in God Almighty working in that person and through that person and let God work through you in the name of Jesus. Just like I have to let God work through me and I'm preaching to myself too. Shame on me. Shame on me for looking at myself and doing a poor me, what are you doing God thing. God has the big picture. He's working out our salvation for his glory. He's molding us and shaping us. We come to him as filthy rags. And in that process, you know, he purges us of impurities. And he lets the impurities bubble to the surface so they can be skinned off the top and we can be new creations in him. Beautiful and holy for his glory. And shame on us for getting in the way of that when it's happening with another person. We want them to have patience with us. You know, look at 1 Corinthians 13. Some of the fruits of the Spirit are patience and long-suffering. All right? Those aren't fun, but they're fruitful. Because in that, if you can keep your eyes centered on God and, and keep, keep looking at God, you know, through these things, then he can give you a deeper sense of peace, a deeper sense of joy in and through long suffering that can only be found in long suffering. But you have to make a choice. Are you going to cling to God? Are you going to cling to self-pity and pride? Okay, pride... Pride caused Lucifer to be cast out of heaven. Satan, before he was Satan, he was in heaven and he was one of the worship leaders for God Almighty. He was an angel, but it was his pride. He wanted to take God's place and God would not have it. You know, rightfully so, God would not have it and he kicked him out of heaven and a third of the angels fell with Satan. And that's where all the troubles of the world started. Started with pride. Started with the sin of pride. And um, that's the biggest sin of all. And if you think about it, that's where all the other sins then line up right behind pride, including fear. You know, fear is not trusting God. You can't operate in fear and faith at the same time. You can't. And so when you're choosing to act in fear over a situation, over how a person is treating, if you're choosing to act out in fear, then um, you're not choosing faith. You know, you're not choosing to see things in, in God's light. And um, so we need to choose unconditional love if, if we want to truly be followers of Christ and disciples of Christ. And now I'd like to touch on something in, in the case of a marriage that has um, physical or severe emotional abuse. I'm not saying that you need to put yourselves or your children in danger. I am not saying that. Okay, there's a difference between removing yourself from a situation physically and 
severing that relationship before you know God has had time to have his way all right there's a difference between um, divorcing someone and removing yourself from an unhealthy situation okay you can do that without legal proceedings you can take your children out of an unhealthy situation into safety um, and still give God time to heal a person you know and God will speak to your heart about timing of things all right and so um, God bless and keep all of you you know dear sweet Heavenly Father please strengthen our hearts and our minds and our spirit I ask you Lord that we submit ourselves completely and fully and always to you for your glory Lord let us be a blessing unto you father in those struggles Lord in those times when we feel we've been betrayed when we're hurt let us seek you let us lock our gaze on you and, and let us choose to love unconditionally, Father, as we would want to be loved unconditionally. Father, I ask you to give us your strength, Lord, your mercy, and let us give mercy and, and grace unto others. Let our, let our speech always be filled with grace, Father, in the name of Jesus. Let us see situations and feel situations and heal, hear situations with your eyes and, and your ears, Father, and your spirit. Let us feel things with your heart, Lord in the name of Jesus and let us love unconditionally as you would have us love Lord and I ask you to let us forgive Lord let there be no unforgiveness no bitter roots in our hearts father in the name of Jesus let us continuously desire to seek you in all things in Jesus name we just praise you and thank you Lord amen God bless you and keep you and be encouraged and uh, keep your eyes on the Lord in the name of Jesus